first I would like you to close your eyes and imagine. Imagine you're visually impaired. You arrive at King's Cross Station in a taxi. You open the door of the taxi. It's cold and windy. You ask for help and the taxi driver kindly points you in the right direction. You start to make your way towards the entrance of the station. You feel the tactile surface, you're in the station. You sense a vast open space that, and that it's busy. And suddenly a train gets announced, there's a rush of people going left to right, making their way towards the ticket barriers. You need to get to the information desk, but you don't know where it is. How do you feel right now? You can open your eyes. There are two million people in the UK living with sight loss. And with an aging population, that's gonna to rise to four million by 2050. That's both a challenge and an opportunity to help improve urban wayfinding. So the inspiration behind this is my friend, Amos Miller. He's a guide dog owner, he works for Microsoft. And when his daughter was born a few years ago, he wanted to take her out for a day in London. He wanted to navigate transport. He wanted to go to the, a museum. He wanted to get a bite to eat. A real challenge if you're visually impaired. <coughs> the innovation behind this, and when we've co-created solutions with visually impaired people, is that audio is really important, spatial audio. If you walk past a fountain, people will tend to orient themselves around that sound. So the challenge became, how can we produce 3D spatial audio from a conventional headset? So how it works, we've got a, a headset, we've got an app on iOS called Soundscape, and it uses cloud services to deliver that 3D audio, built on OpenStreetMap as a mapping, crowdsource mapping concept. The, the actual uh, functionality is really simple. It's built for getting out of the taxi or getting off the tube. What's around me? Where am I? What's ahead of me? And from here, we've probably got uh, Impact Hub, um, Premier Inn, King's Cross, Platform 9 and 3 quarters. That's probably what I'd hear if I was standing right here. And really when we've done early trials of this, we found that in areas of orientation and confidence in mobility, it's really enhanced those dimensions of, of actual navigation. And, and more importantly, it hasn't detrimented from any of those dimensions, which is really important when sometimes you introduce technology into an experience. So Soundscape was launched um, in the UK App Store and in the US App Store in March, and latterly in Australia. And so actually you can use Soundscape globally and it's matched by the global coverage of OpenStreetMap. So I live in the small city of St Albans and so I take Soundscape for a walk down my high street. And what do I hear? I hear the ghosts of St Albans past. I hear VHS, Pound World, all these things that have closed down. The problem is the digital landscape has not kept up with the physical landscape. But surely this is a problem, surely this is the experience, and it's not a great one of somebody using this app for the first time. But we can't let all these years of R&D go to waste because we're not linking a global app with our hyper-local city of St Albans. So this is a problem of last mile innovation, and how do we plug that gap? So a local innovator and I decided that we would do an experiment with the community. Can we get the community to curate our experience in St Albans? So if somebody comes and brings their device to our small city, they can have a brilliant experience of our curated city. And so the, the actual context was, was really simple. We wanted in three steps to prove St Albans that we could plan, curate and launch the app. And then we'd like to build a toolkit. We'd like to give this toolkit to other communities in the surrounding area. So towns like Hemel and, and Hatfield and Stevenage. And could we actually go to Hertfordshire or not? So we've talked a lot about um, visually impaired, but really um, Soundscape's built on the principles of inclusive design. So we're actually using a range of diversity and a range of abilities to inform a better product. And so with the three principles of inclusive design, we've looked at those very carefully. So we've recognized the visually impaired exclusion. We've learned that we need to use 3D spatial audio and actually um, seamlessly navigating things together. So we've solved or tried to solve the use case. So now we can extend that use case to many. 
So we started to use soundscape in terms of an audio environment for blind people. But it's really useful if I'm in an environment I don't know very well. If I'm in a shopping centre and I don't know where the amenities are. If I'm in a rushing for a train and I'd like some information on the fly. If I'm a visitor to a city, I'm a tourist and I'd like to know what's around me and some more information. These are all extended scenarios where we can solve many things. And so in terms of joining up the smart city, when I walk through a city, I might be experiencing some of those or all of those scenarios. And we think the problem's solved because there's an app for this and an app for that and the human in the middle is joining them together. But in reality, we're crossing different landowners, different services providers. So we need partnerships, we need the stakeholders. And we found this works at three levels. You need the envisioners, you need the urban master planners, the people that have the big picture, but you also need the service providers. And, and so in, in terms of um, where we've done this in Reading, and what we're starting start doing in St Albans is bring those people together. So you can use Soundscape globally, but your experience will be very different depending on the quality of information. So we're using the Unlocked brand to signify that we've taken some care over curating that experience and our city is unlocked for you to bring your devices and your apps to. And so our ambition is to unlock the world, one city and one experience at a time. And we've started with St Albans, we'd love to do it in London and other global cities. And we'd like to give the chance for other cities to really embrace 3D spatial audio and help everybody to wake up.